Good morning, Grace Covenant. We started our time of devotion this morning with a lovely little song without words by Felix Mendelssohn. I've been studying this piece and thinking about a lot of things. Look at this music here. You see lots of notes, but ever so often you see these rest in the music. There's a quarter rest, there's an eighth rest up there, there's another rest there. This music has little rest all the way through it. And it made me go back to thinking about one of the fundamental definitions of music. And at its simplest, music as an art form is the arrangement of sound and silence. It's not just the notes. It's those silent moments in between the notes. <clears throat> and I have been thinking about that um, and paralleling that with this time that we are in, in isolation. Debussy, the great um, Impressionist composer, French uh, Impressionism composer, said that music is not in the notes, but in the spaces between them. Listen to that again. Music is not in the notes, but in the spaces between them. Miles Davis said it another way. He said, it's not in the notes you play, it's in the notes you don't play. And there is, there is an ancient thought in Japanese music called ma, M-A. <clears throat> and that thought in the making of uh, music uh, from Japan is that the space in between sound, or it is the space in between sounds that the performer must master. It is the space in between sounds that the performer must master. I wonder how that translates to where we find ourselves in this time of silence, of isolation, of what feels like we're not making music that's actually the space that we need to master. There are also these amazing bronze bells um, that have been discovered called dotaku bells in Japan. They date from about uh, 200 BC and they existed, they believe, for about 400 years. <clears throat> and many of these bells were evidently just buried in the ground with no clapper to ring just with the intent that they would remain silent. We still don't know a lot about these instruments. Uh, there is one on display at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, if you ever get there. But it's fascinating, a bell designed to make sound that never gets to make sound. And silence being as integral to music making as the actual notes that we play. When I think about the great cathedrals of the world, and I've had the good fortune to play in a few, some of them have this amazing wafting acoustic. And when you play the organ and you release, the sound reverberates through the space. And at the end of that reverberation, you can hear the room settle into silence. If you've ever worshiped in a big cathedral, this is part of the reason that the hymns are slower and that the organist takes time. And sometimes there are several what feels like seconds between singing of stanzas. And that's because the space needs to clear, the sound needs to clear in order to start something new. So I have been, again, thinking about that in terms of how we are navigating this pandemic. And I wonder, how these silent spaces are showing up in your life <clears throat> and, and what you are learning from the silence. There are examples throughout every genre of music where the orchestra crescendos to a frenzied pace and there's a huge fermata, a hold, and then a release. 
and there's a pregnant pause. And then something comes after that. Sometimes it's full orchestra. Sometimes it's one instrument gently entering until another one joins it in duet and then trio, and then it takes us somewhere else. And I kind of feel like living with music has helped me learn how to live with life because I feel like this world has gotten to a point where we were in a frenetic pace and there was this tension and release and this drama going on and suddenly we are in a grand pause. Not necessarily that any of that was bad. It was a part of the life of music, but it was pushing us to a place where the most musical thing we could do next was to have silence, to absorb what has happened before that moment and to anticipate what might be coming ahead. And I'm not the composer orchestrating this. I don't know what comes after the grand pause. But I do know that these pauses are important. Back in 1952, an avant-garde composer named John Cage, um, one of his pieces was performed for the very first time. The piece was called 433. And on that day in 1952, the performer came out with the music, placed it on the music rack, opened the piano, set his watch right next to the music, and then proceeded to sit at the keyboard in silence for four minutes and 33 seconds. Cage was making a statement he pushed the envelope a lot further than composers had before, but he was saying that there is music in the silence, that everything that happens in that silent moment, and truly there is no silence because there's always the wind blowing, a clock ticking, a heartbeat, rain on the roof or birds singing, traffic going by, people getting up at a concert disgruntled by avant-garde music and rustling and muttering under their breath as they leave the concert hall, which happened on that day. Some people just couldn't handle it. I get it. If you come to a concert expecting music and you get silence, it makes you uncomfortable. If you come into life expecting there always to be something and then you're thrown into a pandemic and you have to pull back, it makes you uncomfortable. But there's music in this silence. And there is a place for us as a people of faith to contribute to the song, to embrace what this silence is teaching us, and to anticipate greatly what's gonna come after the silence. Maybe you think of Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. Maybe that's what needs to happen in the silence. Remember the prophet who kept expecting God to show up in the whirlwind and the fire and God came in the still small voice. So I encourage you today to embrace the silence as a part of life. It's there for a reason, and it makes the music sound that much sweeter. That Mendelssohn piece I played would be sloppy and boring if I hadn't nuanced those little bitty rests. And I sometimes get meticulous with my choir and with myself in learning pieces because those rests are ultimately important to the integrity of the music. So live into the rest, embrace the silence, and wait with great anticipation about what comes next. And while you're doing that Grace Covenant, continue to stay home, stay safe, stay connected, and know that you are loved. Thanks be to God.